Yo, what's up guys? Just a quick raw video, my review on this balance patch that we have right now. So this balance patch is gonna go live after the SWC of the APEC Cup, which is on the 1st of October. So this balance patch is gonna be there on the 4th of October, if I'm not mistaken. We have a bunch of things that were expected, a bunch of things that I was like surprised about. But in the end, in my opinion, not a balance patch. Sure, there's gonna be a bunch of people talking about like, ah, oh, we missed this and we missed that and this is not there and my unit is not addressed and this unit is still bad and that unit is so bad. To me personally, I don't mind if they address like not everything at the same time because that would get like pretty messy. So what I was expecting as first, I already read it a little bit. I was expecting something siege related, some new units that was going to get like a speed buff or something. Some of the current siege meta units getting reduced a little bit. So first thing we see right away is Carcano getting a one turn armor break rather than a two turn armor break. I think that's a pretty big nerf, but since it applies on every turn that he has, I think it is not that insanely OP. I think he's still gonna be meta, I think he's still gonna be good, he's not nerfed to shit, so for the people that bought like three of them, I actually bought three of them, um, I think he's still pretty usable, but we got some other options for speedly later. So we got the Howl, so mainly Lulu, but also the others, they got a cool time increase on their third skill, but also on their second skill. I think that's a little bit overdone in my opinion, I think you only had to do the second skill, not the third and the second skill. But that's my opinion. That's kind of like the thing they also did for Joe Gun. They instantly, okay, the unit is OP. Let's go for the double nerf. I think a single nerf would have been OP. Or that would have been fine because his S2 was really OP. If you reset the unit, he still gets his skill up pretty fast. So for that sake, okay. And then they buffed the fire and the dark one to not make it too weak. Because they nerfed it in the S2 and S3. So... I guess that's fine. I, I guess, yeah, is what it is. Wait, is that actually... No, wait, I, I'm stupid. He was only one skill. I thought they m went for the S2 and the S3 because I was looking at the turns. No, actually, it's only the heal. So the heal is only the second skill. So no, wait, then it's actually fine. I said nothing. Ha, huh, this is an uh, uncut video, so I'm gonna leave it in there. I don't mind. Wait, let me double check in the game. Where, where the Lulu at? Lulu. Yeah, the other one, the third skill is uh, remove heal. So they only nerfed the second skill, which I think perfectly fine. Huh. You probably already wrote that in the comments. But I don't want to edit this video because then it will take like three hours longer for this video to actually be on YouTube. And I just want to get it out there pretty quick. So we have that and then they buff the third skill for the dark and the fire one, which I guess is fine. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Might be wrong, I don't, to be honest, I don't even really know what these units do, so uh, show me the difference later. On Imushas, they get a 19% damage decrease on the S1, which is a lot. That's 19% damage is a lot. Then we have the Wind One Fuki, the additional damage for lost HP goes from 20 to 15. I think that's fair, Fuki pretty much hit like a Ramagos. He's, he's legit like a Ramagos. Currently, that is a little bit less. Then the Dark One, he's also going to be nerfed quite some. Man, the Dark One is nerfed pretty hard. Because he has like 19% damage reduction on the S1. But also another like damage reduction on the um, passive. Which is, I think, a total of 40%, isn't it? Yeah, because normally he does 50% uh, damage more. If just normal. And then if he's stunned, he does another 50% damage more. If I'm not mistaken. Currently, is that a 30 plus a 30 then? Or am I... Misunderstanding that, I don't know. Carnal aka M. Bison uh, goes for the attack bar pushbacks from 30% to 15%. Um, I think that's fine. I, I thought they were going to do that on the S2. The S2 was the skill that gives him a lot of rotation. But S3, I think it's a fine unit. It is a nerf. Yes, it is. Uh, I use this unit a lot, but I think it's a fair nerf. It's not too game-breaking on this unit or anything. To just give him this nerf, I think he will be okay with that. Then we have the Valkyrias. The Valkyrias have a, like a pretty interesting buff. So all of them get an S1 chance. Um, wait, where's the all? Yeah, here. So this is the S1, if I'm not mistaken. Increase the enemy target's uh, skill cooldown by 1 with a 20% chance. There is a chance that this will be upped by, uh, what's it called? Um, skill ups. I'm not sure if it's going to change anything or the skill ups are just going to do still the same. 
So actually, I used to run my, um, what's it called? Vanessa on accuracy as two, but currently you also want the accuracy as one then. So you kind of have to fix accuracy in the unit itself. Changes up the belt a little bit, but I think it's fine. It's kind of weird-ish. It's kind of on the level of a Pioneer S1, that the S1 can do something pretty interesting, but on a very low R. So I don't think it's bad. Then we have the light one. And chances to receive critical hit uh, reduction by 30% to 15%. So that one is, in a sense, nerfed. So I guess they nerfed that one because they buff like other stuff. And I think um, Acroma would be really OP if you didn't do this as well. I think Acroma is still pretty good. Probably Acroma users are not going to agree with me that that is nerfed. But I think the whole kit is pretty much buffed because this S2 is... You're going to have a lot more... Of the silence, which is the best one of the S2s that I, I I think is out there, and then this small reduction. But you also have an S1 buff, so I think that is fair. So for um, all Vanessa, uh, Camilla, and Acroma, the S2 is one turn cooldown increased. So this actually ends up in a two turn because I think this four turn is without skill ups, if I'm not mistaken, and then with skill ups. It might be a two turn, so every other turn you can hit that, which for a unit like Vanessa is actually pretty nice because, wait, I'm looking up the unit. Every other turn you can actually use it. Yeah, so normally it's three turns with skill ups, so it's going to be two turns with skill ups. So it's going to be same as like Justice for the Dragon Knights. It's going to be one turn you, you use it, the other turn you don't use it. So that's a lot of silence coming out from the Acroma. So I think the Acroma nerf is pretty valid because it was buffed pretty hard as well. Now we have the wind one, Soul Reaper, attacks the enemy, inflict damage, becomes invisible for one turn, resets the call time on short discharge, the enemy is killed. So yeah, both the uh, wind and the dark one that have Soul Reaper, they reset their whole third skill the moment they kill something with a second skill. Does that mean that, I think she's, like, this unit is still, the, the Katarina is still like a one-shot unit with the S3, you don't really want to bruiser it out. So I think that is kind of fine, but I'm not really sure if it's going to be useful. The Trinity, I guess, but I think if you will use it, this would still be more of a cleave unit rather than a bruiser unit. So I guess it's fine as well, but it's not really too interesting. I think. Then we have, I think it's Nana, the water mage. She starts with one um, soul harvest, which means she can revive something right off the bat, which I think is fair. Um, is it really good though? No, I don't think it's still. Pretty much all revivers in game are pretty shit for RTA. Sure, you can use them in some weird scenarios, but I don't think this becomes a good reviver for that for any reason. Then we have the Wind Mage. I kind of expected them to have like more useful kill skills. That's kind of what I expected to be the approach, but apparently not. Um, Wind Mage, that's Momo. Increase your attack power and defense. Wait, do it, did it used to be... No, defense is new. Okay, that's interesting. By 10% up to 300% whenever an ally attacks an enemy. Okay, but does multi-hits multi or AoE hits, hits count? So is it 30 turns? Or can you do, like, let's say you have a unit, Nephthys hits 3 times AoE. Is that 12 stacks, 120%? Or is, does it count as 1? I'm not sure about that. But This already sounds a lot more interesting. Mainly Guild Siege related. RTA, I'm not sure. Could be, but mainly Guild Siege related. So then we have Archangels, a whole bunch of Archangel buffs. So it used to be three turn um, of continuous damage. Currently is decreased the defense for one turn by 50% chance. I'm not sure if this 50% chance is a flat 50% or that it actually increased by skill ups. It could be that it increased by skill ups. 50% chances for that is not that great. One turn armor breaks in general are not that great. Because um, it's one of your slower units probably. So unless it procs like S2 into S1, it's pretty good. But otherwise, I don't really see the benefits of a one-turn defense break on this unit that much. But that's my thing on it. Then we have the Archangels, Water, Light, and Wind. They give a defense buff on the target when using Archangels Blessing. Which I guess is mainly good for... Artemil, but Artemil is still kind of out of meta because of the Onimusha's and Kinky just being way better, even though Kinky is kind of nerfed right now as well. But that is that. Now we have uh, Amelia and Eleanor, or Eleanor, and one of the two, I always mix the two up. Fierce Charge, the ponies, provoke one turn into a two turn provoke. 
I guess that's okay. I use her in Siege a lot, but besides that, not that much. Then we have Elena, Internal Flames. Recovery from 20 to, uh, 10 to 20%. On your turn, okay, and increase attack bar. Okay, wait, that's the... Wait, how do you get it increase? That thing already increased attack bar on S2 already, right? So why would you need more increased attack bar on your third seat? Maybe so you have easier cycling against less units i guess so i'm not sure now we have the light one decreases on allies received critical hits by 50 percent okay that's fine i guess more crit reduction and then the third one that's the wait is that nerfed oh that's wait that's actually pretty interesting it used to be 30 percent on yourself or 30% on the enemy back, but now it's 20% on all enemies. So against a cleave team, this is pretty interesting. If you have a cleave team that has no sustain, and you put, for example, the Alexandra plus a Pisama, they're going to kill their whole team pretty much. So that is actually pretty interesting. So instead of the Zyros just dying, you pretty much kill like the whole thing with that as a counter. That's, that's interesting, I guess. So then we have the Light Pioneer and the Water Pioneer, aka Wunsa and Nigong. Mount of Power now does a... Inflicts damage proportion to your max HP to 20% of your max HP. So I guess it's not a clean 20% of your max HP hit. Let's say you have a 50k Nigong that it's, it's gonna do 10k damage. I'm not even sure if it's much of a buff. I don't even think you do that much more damage. I also don't think it's ignore defense like straight up 20% of your HP. I'm not sure could be. Uh, it would mean if it does like that as ignore defense that it just like straight up does like the max of your HP. It could mean that it's gonna deal quite some, quite some more damage for RTA still useless because it you drop the HP in RTA so... I guess for Guild War, Guild Siege, Arena Defense useful, but for RTA pretty useless. Then we have the Wind, Fire and Dark that get an increase on the S2. That's pretty good mainly for Chiwu and uh, Chiwu and Wunsa in RTA. And I guess Pungbi gets kind of a buff because Pungbi mainly Arena Offense of course. Inflicts the damage that was usually 30% of the other units that you hit is now 50% of the other units that you hit. So you have a good shot of actually killing people with that. Like for example, if you do this third skill on a Pisama, low defense, you're going to hit that one for, let's say, 80k. You can hit the others for like 40k. So that will be decent. Uh, Dark Dragon is buffed. Didn't really expect that one to get a buff. Let me actually check which one of the skills it is. Um, Dark Dragon, nope, that's not the Dark Dragon here. Decimate is, Decimate is third skill. Wait, that's... I thought they were actually buffing the second skill, but they are buffing the third skill. And before it could not be revived, but now it ignores all effects that resist death. So it's gonna ignore Triana's, it's gonna ignore um, Beast Riders as well. So this unit becomes a bit more useful and 8% damage increase. It's just a slight bit of damage increase. I think it's not bad, but I think in a lot of cases you still do too little damage to actually kill stuff. But at least you ignore all resist death effects right now, which does make it a lot better for arena often. So, yeah, I, I, I guess I will use it more often. I think there's a lot more chances for me to use it. I just have to get more damage on this thing to actually make sure you kill. If you miss an armor break, it's pretty bad. So it's kind of risky in arena offense, but I think it's pretty nice as well. Then we have another buff to Nigong. Nigong, um, an additional buff is when it's kind of weird worded, but I guess what it means is the moment that your S3 is on cooldown, you get a Darion buff kind of reduction of damage by 15% on all of your allies, but not yourself. I guess it's decent. I'm not sure. I guess for arena defense could be decent. I don't think it's too crazy or anything. It would have been better if it became like a passive that it like immediately goes off if he dies or something. But maybe that would be too OP. I don't know. But it's still a low revive. Like the HP you revive is... I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just a low revive. You, you end up with very little HP, zero attack bar. I don't think Nigang is that crazy good of his unit still. But 
Yep, I, I guess it's a something. Then we have the Water Seal Fit, Healing Breeze, decrease the cold time of Healing Breeze by one turn if there are no harmful effects to be removed on the other targets. And I don't think that will be any crazy good or something. Very slow, like Bruisery Unit, maybe Siege Offense, I don't know. And we have the Light One. Light One actually grants immunity for one turn on allies with full HP. Wait, that's actually the, the one they used with uh, on defense with Artemil. That's actually pretty interesting because the S3, I think it gives like a defense buff and a good heal or something. So if you have a immunity one turn on top of that, it's not bad. It's nothing too crazy, but not bad. Anubis, the Ayunu, if uh, receive, like if, if he dies, he uses branding of hell on the target that kills you. I think that's decent. I don't think it's super OP because, well, actually, no, it's actually pretty nice because if you do your Branding of Hell on the unit that just killed you, and then you get another turn because you get full attack bar on death, you can do Branding again. So there's already a Branding, so you're actually going to do a lot of damage on the thing. And doesn't the armor break on S2 as well or something weird? Wait, let me check. Never built the unit. Where he at? To get branding. Yeah, and the damage increases when the enemy HP is lower. So there's no armor break on it, but if you throw two brandings of hell on like a unit that just killed you, you might have good potential to kill it yourself. So it's a pretty decent unit. I think so. I think so. So now we have the sky dances, mainly the uh, all elements except the light one, which well, light one was already pretty strong. So let's see. We have the fire one, uh, pride of. Uh, will fall that's the third skill if I'm not mistaken and it will decrease defense for two turns with a 30% rate if I'm not mistaken she throws off four blades oh uh, wait that's the one that gets four blades aoe right doesn't she wait let me check where to find her the images are not loading the images are not loading here we have this one this one third skill yeah, it, it hits uh, random targets on a 5 turn cooldown, goes minus 1. So you might get AoE armor break. It doesn't say how many um, things she shoots out. I think it's 4 or 5. So, But at 30% rate, it might go up with skill ups. But that could be a slight increase for her usability. But I don't think it's too crazy. She does get um, a different um, leader skill as well, which does make her more interesting. Then we have the dark one, Wuyong. Is that Wuyong? What's her name? Yeah, Wuyong. Um, increases the attack bar increase by 15 to 20%. So for the people that use it for cleave, it becomes easier. So I think it's pretty good. Then we have the water one, which will attack all enemies five times, which always lands critical hit on fire, with each attack having a chance to decrease the uh, defense for two turns. The damage uh, increases as the enemy... HP status decreases. I think it's a decent nuke, but I'm not sure. With hitting five times with additional damage artifacts might be nice, but I'm I'm not really feeling it. Like it's it's okay-ish, but I don't know. Wind one, um, increase damage by fifteen percent. Wait, which skill is that? Let me check. The magic mic. Wind magic mic. That Tempest Sword is the third skill, so... Oh wait, that's a Vampire, haha, <laughs> I was thinking about a Magic Mic. I am so wrong with that one. Then we have the Wind one, so Death Blow is the third skill, okay. And that normally increases the damage for each harmful effect, so besides increasing the damage for each harmful effect, it's also gonna leave a branding. But it's just a 20% rate. Not a big fan, not a big fan. The Dark One removes uh, buffs with a higher rate. That's good. You can use that. The Light One removes all harmful effects granted on you the moment of death. So I guess... I'm not sure if you still can die by dots. That's the main thing. If you don't die by dots, then it would be really good. If he still dies by dots, he's pretty bad. So that's, that's kind of the in-between where this unit would be good or bad. Um... Besides that, nice buff. But if he would remove like the dots and he doesn't die because of that, I think he would be very good. Because dots mainly was the counter to him or just CC him. So 
I guess that's pretty nice. Then we have the magic mics. They will have a higher chance of armor breaking on the dark and the water one. Not too interesting. Gravity shot, one turn cooldown reduced. Not too interesting. Uh, we have all of the magic archers. Uh, yeah, okay. We mainly have that puts to sleep becomes a one turn stun. Is there actually really a change of a stun between stun and a sleep? Is it kind of the same thing? No, wait, a sleep you cannot hit afterwards. Stun you can hit afterwards. Well, yeah. Potatoes, potatoes, I don't think it's that crazy of a thing. Uh, then we have the uh, what the arrow of water. Three arrows, each having a 25% chance to stun and increase the damage on the inability effects. Yeah, okay, whatever. Fire one, more continuous damage. Well, the continuous damage changes. Okay, does that make it anything for... Uh, what's it called that you can actually properly use it for a team that would say a dot team or something attacks all enemies twice with burning arrows to inflict continuous damage for three turns with a 35% rate of each attack and it increases by another 20% so they're making it 65 which means 85 two times Two times an 85 chance is not too crazy, to be honest. So it's, it's still not really PvE thing that you would be like, yo, this is the this is the shit. So then we have the water, fire, and dark one on the second skills and AoE slow, if I'm not mistaken. Higher chance of AoE slow. Meh, I don't care. And we have the light one, 7% damage increase. That's one of those like I never really get. Fami, same thing. I don't really see these units getting, the ma magical arch is not really getting used, but whatever. You have the Dark One with his Bethany, which is one of the better units in general. Maybe Bethany gets some more use. The S2 of Bethany is still pretty shit. The S1... Mm, I don't know. So, it's mainly... No, it's... No, I don't think that's really a thing. So, normally it was 15% uh, chance of ignoring the defense for each harmful effect. It's gonna become 20%. The damage is adjusted according to the effect change. Yeah, this, I have no clue what that means. I have legit no clue. Like, they adjusted it according to a change. Yeah. What? Which way? You can adjust something up or you can adjust something down. That doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever is what it is. I I have two of them. I never use them. I don't expect to use her afterwards as well. Then we have the Dark Valkyria, aka Trinity. We go from a resist lead to a crit rate lead. It's still an HP type unit, which I think is the weirder thing than this resistance lead. But I guess it's easier to use her right now. Then we have the uh, Segment Fire Desert Cream, which goes from 25 Act to 15 Speed. Which is actually relatively interesting for a bunch of reasons, because... Um, you can use her in arena defense. I actually got one legend reward with her on arena defense. Because she is going to target either the Lucian because of uh, wind. Or she's got to target the Tiana because of also wind. So if she uses S3 on those units, it's actually pretty beneficial. And she's a fire unit which of course counters um, wind as well. And if she has a lot more speed, it might be actually pretty annoying. It was pre clara though, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're going to see this unit because still... If the S3 is resisted, it's still a pretty shit unit, so... You are having 15 speed is better than 25 act though, but you still want to land those X chicks, so I'm not really sure if that's... That's your main concern. You go, you could go accuracy S3, because you don't need any other stats on it than accuracy in the first place, but... I guess it's a something. I guess it's a something. So then Kraka. Kraka is actually pretty interesting. So increases the um, resistance by 25 to strength and shatter. Removes one beneficial effect by 20% chance. So that is actually pretty legit interesting in my opinion. Because shatter hits twice. So can you technically hit with a despair Kraka? You can strip armor break stun in one skill. It's low odds, yes it is, it's very low odds, but I feel like Kraka has some value with that, because she's also cycling turns and that kind of stuff, so I think Kraka, it's not going to be a very good unit, but I feel like a strip on S2 that's AoE multi-hitting, is and you're cycling that skill a lot because of the other effects on that skill, there's there's a lot of effects on that skill right now, which I think is pretty pretty strong. 
Then we go for Archangels. Archangels have a boost of 5 in the base speed, which I guess is better for Ariel and well, every, everything, but is it really crazy? Not really. Are we gonna see more Archangels in general in play? Mm, not too sure, not too sure. Then we have the Sky Dances, which I talked about earlier, some changes of the Guild Leader skills, mostly for Siege. Uh, we have Mi Yang having a 28 speed lead for guild leader which is the highest speed lead except for um Geldnir and sylvia and the fun thing is that most other speed leads we used to have was pretty often a fire unit like kamun like um carcano those were the four star speed leads currently you can throw this in a four star dungeon or a four star tower with a water speed lead which opens up some more potential for other units because your fire slot was already taken by the speed lead now you can use your fire unit for something else so that's pretty interesting i feel like i gotta sneeze i'm not gonna cut that out i muted my microphone so that was fine so then we go to the fire one that has a defense lead mm, not really feeling that one wind one has an hp lead wind one is actually an underused unit that's pretty good like if you look like four Five years back in uh, Guild Wars, Chasum was everywhere in offense currently, like with Friend that brings like immunity, attack buff, that kind of stuff. We don't see it as much, but still she's a pretty good unit. So pretty interesting. Then we have Chloe getting a 20% speed lead for Arena, so also RTA. So before I saw Fame, like Fame Memory used uh, Chloe in RTA in SWC, I always thought like once I of Wusa's technically better because of a better S1 and it kind of does the same thing but currently this is actually better right now because well if you don't have any speed leads a 20% speed lead is still pretty useful so I guess that's decent arena defense I don't think it's going to be any good because well yeah, you can just strip it and I don't even think our AI is that crazy but for RTA related stuff this might be decent and then the final buff is the Dark Sky Dancer, which is just a different wording, which actually says that it's gonna hit four times rather than it's gonna hit with multiple blades. Okay, that's about it for the balance patch. So, video is already kind of lengthy. Uh, this is kind of my review on it. Uh, I think it's a pretty fine balance patch. If they do a similar balance patch or like this every two months, I think it's gonna be fine. They addressed a few families that were weak. They addressed a few families that were too strong. Um, some of the buffs might not make sense right away. But as you guys know, the meta is kind of uh, like evolving slowly. But over time, also if there's no balance patch, there's still a meta change is go coming, going. Just by what people are using or not using and anything like that. For example, currently in uh, Europe, we are using Terranese on Siege Defense where it was never really buffed recently or anything. Korea has been using that for a long time already. So metas are different, metas are kind of revolving because one beats the other, then the other beats that one, and you go in a circle, and at some point you're just bolding stuff that counters the other, mainly for Siege. Um, and it's also just good to be new. If people are not used to the defense, they, they, they feel more to it in general. For RTA, RTA not that much changed. Uh, we got the Lulu change, we got the Bison change, which are pretty much the two strongest units right now. We got only Musha Nerfs, which are pretty hard for um, RTA as well, because Kaki was used a lot, Kinky was used a lot. Kinky didn't get that much of a hit because he cares a little bit less about doing damage than just being his passive. He already was nerfed previously. We got mages changes. I think the wind one might be decent, but the water one I'm still not really feeling. And mainly the any reviver is pretty bad. So we have that Valkyries. I think the uh, I think they're pretty decent. We might see more Vanessa in play in RTA as well. Uh, Acroma I think is quite a lot better if you can put silence every other turn, which is pretty big. You can lock down silence a unit by that. Um, yeah, Dark One Trinity, I guess more for Cleves and that kind of stuff. Archangels, I'm not really sure if we're going to see anyone more of them. I think Artemio might have a little bit better stuff right now with the defense buff, but I don't really feel like it's a great buff. Same for the Fire and Dark One. I guess they're really good for Siege still, though. Um, same with the Unicorns. I guess the Dark One is good against Cleavers besides that. Maybe the Light One is good against Cleaves as well. 
Quite one I kind of expected to just see in Siege rather than anything. For the Pioneers, I think the Pioneers are pretty decent of a buff. Mainly for Siege, Guild War content, that kind of stuff. I don't really expect to see any of them in RTA that much. Except for, of course, the Fire and the Dark one on the S2 buff, which is kind of beneficial. Because they need damage in, in their cleave teams where they're mostly at. Dark Dragon, pretty nice, I guess. Um, this one, Arena Defense, but I'm not really feeling this thing either how, because it has to be on cooldown. So if your team is already dead while well, you revive them, but they it's it's such a low revive, I don't really feel that's that's a good thing. Sylphids, I don't know. This one, Ayuna is pretty good. Sky Dances became pretty good. Vampires, I guess the light and the dark one might be nice right now. It really depends how the light one passive works. Magic Mics, I don't know. Mystical Arches, I don't know, and then these changes all are pretty solid. So that's my take on this balance patch. I think it is pretty solid. There's probably gonna be a whole bunch of people disagreeing, like, what about Christina? What about this shit unit and that shit unit? Yes, sorry, there's gonna be shit units in the game. But if you buff everything, then it's gonna be very messy as well. So i rather have them have these kind of balance patches every two months. And then maybe the next one is... Uh, is Charlotte or uh, not Charlotte? The next one is Christina or your LD Net Five. That's not bad or anything else. I think they have a solid balance special. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next.